Hi everyone, this is Pastor Laura from St. Paul Asheville and we're having a story time again today for anyone who hopes to tune in. This book today is a learning book but also tells a story. It tells a story about having a grandma and or it could be about a grandpa who um, has what's called Alzheimer's or even dementia and that means they are a grandma or a grandpa whose mind won't let them remember the way they used to or look at what's real in front of them the same or mix up their words but still inside is that grandma you love or that grandpa you love. So um, this book is about a little girl named Kira and how she learns to relate to her grandma. All right, we'll go ahead with the book. This book is called Doll for Grandma. It's a story about Alzheimer's disease and it's by Paulette Bochnig Sharkey and illustrated by Samantha Wu. And here we go. Kira and Grandma always found ways to have fun together. So our main characters here are Kira and Grandma. They played dress up. Grandma's feet were so tiny, her fancy shoes almost fit Kira. They painted their fingernails in shiny bright colors. Grandma's nails were long and made a rat-a-tat sound on the table. They zipped around in Grandma's sporty car. When Kira stayed overnight at Grandma's house, Grandma knit while they watched TV. She showed Kira how to weave and loop yarn with her fingers to make a necklace. On special occasions, they baked molasses cookies using an old recipe from Grandma's mother. Kira pinched off bits of dough and rolled them into perfect balls. They served the cookies at their picnic. Kira's doll was invited. What's special about today? Kira asked. You are, Kira, Grandma said. One day, Kira saw Grandma's keys in the refrigerator next to the orange juice. And Grandma started knitting hats too small to fit anyone's head. I think something's wrong with Grandma, Kira told her mom. Grandma's brain is forgetting how to remember, Mom explained. Here she is. See how her expression has changed. Soon Grandma moved into a place for people who had trouble remembering. When Kira visited Grandma at the memory care home, Grandma was different. Instead of fancy high heels, she wore thick gray shoes with Velcro straps. Instead of knitting when she watched TV, she rubbed her hands over her blanket, pulling off fuzzy tufts of yarn and piling them in her lap. Kira noticed that the nails on Grandma's busy fingers were bare and cut short. No more rat-a-tat-tat.
Instead of driving her sporty car, Grandma traveled by wheelchair. Most days, Grandma stared out the window and didn't say much. There she is in her wheelchair. Once in a while, she said something that made Kira laugh. One afternoon, Grandma announced, I had fried mosquitoes and a cup of hot tea for lunch. Was it good? asked Kira. Delicious, Grandma smiled, but her lips quickly settled back into a straight line. Kira missed Grandma's smile. Another day, Grandma called Kira Sally Mae. What is going on, Kira wondered. On the way home, Mom said, Sally Mae was Grandma's best friend when she was about your age. And that gave Kira an idea. Kira and Mom went to the store and they picked out a baby doll for Grandma. Grandma cried when they gave it to her, but Kira thought she looked happy. Here they are in her room at the memory care place. Kira and Grandma took care of their dolls together, rocking them and feeding them and tucking them in for naps. There she is. She's at the memory care center and so are some other people. And it looks like they're sharing music. They all went to listen when the piano lady came. Grandma sat quietly until she heard, you are my sunshine. And then she sang loud, serenading her doll and everybody else. Remember that's the song that goes, you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. I wonder if you know that song. Well, Grandma did, and she sang along. On Saturday afternoon, volunteers brought their dogs. Oh, puppy, 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 Grandma whispered, stroking a tiny dog's silky ears. She shoved her doll out. She showed her doll how to pet the puppy, too. And there they are, having a picnic. On special occasions, Kira and Mom baked molasses cookies to share with Grandma. They followed the old recipe exactly. Know what's special about today, Grandma? Kira asked. You are. And that's the end of the story. I have a couple things that go with this book. Some things that we can do when um, we have a grandma or a grandpa or someone we know who has forgotten to remember just like this grandma did. And these are the things to remember. It takes away somebody's ability to remember if they have dementia or Alzheimer's but you can help them remember something you did together by sharing that. You can help them remember what they did with you. It also takes away their ability to recognize what's real. So our best response, according to this, is to follow Kira's lead and accept your loved one's reality and enjoy it with them. 
even if they think they ate mosquitoes for lunch and had a nice tea. So just join in. They also need to have touch and feel and smell and you can help and share activities like that. I remember one of um, the times I had worship with a group um, that I knew some people had memory care issues. We passed something around and they all talked about it and that really helped us get sharing. So sometimes dementia or Alzheimer's takes away the ability to use language but still to communicate. So someone might confuse words but you can continue to just accept what they say and make sure the tone of voice, just like with your puppy dogs and kittens, that they're positive. They might not understand your words, but they'll understand your attitude. <clears throat> it also says that dementia takes away someone's ability to change their mood. So if they're having a very sad day, they might stay sad all day. Now you can be someone who offers a different mood while you're with them. You don't have to take on that mood. It might take a while, but they will eventually follow a lead of your mood. So um, those are things to remember when you are visiting because it's still important for you to be with grandmas and grandpas even if that becomes a reality for them just like we would visit a grandma or grandpa who had hip surgery or who was getting over some other surgery, we would still connect. So I encourage you not to get scared and to let an adult help you to understand how grandma or grandpa or your favorite aunt or uncle is changing. So blessings to you. It's a hard thing to figure out, but you can do it. All right, let's look at this picture again to remember. All right, we will see you on Thursday with another book.